everyone, I'm Sarah Table. Welcome to another episode of Restored the Album, Behind the Song, Behind the Story, Behind the Scenes, BTS. And today I'm joined by none other than Najee Buzia. He is one of my recent discoveries in terms of UK worship leaders, UK recording artists, and just an overall nice guy. And he actually features on the album Restored on a song called God Alone. For me, that is one of my favorite songs on the project, even though it's my project. But before we go any further, I'm going to let Naji introduce himself and tell us something interesting about you that could potentially make people's jaws drop. Something nobody would ever think about Naji. Over to you, Naji. Introduce yourself and tell us something fun about okay. you. Okay. Hey, hey, guys. I am honored to be here in this interview with Sarah. Sarah it's just amazing um, things about me. So I'm Naji Fuzia. Um, I'm 22 years of age. Um, something very interesting about me that no one really knows. Um, I think what they don't know is that um, my grandpa was, my great grandpa was actually the prime minister of Ghana. And I come through that lineage. Um, he Wait. was one of the first prime ministers in Ghana and his name was called um, Dr. Koja Nana Bozio. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, yeah, so I come through my lineage of, um, of you know, of uh, so my family is a part of the great big six of in Ghana, and uh, okay, yeah, that's a bit. Well, yeah, <laughs> that no one ever knew about me. So that's why my surname um, is, is is actually a big surname in Ghana. All right. So, Do you reckon you might have a future in politics? Maybe you go back and become a, a governor or uh, a governor yeah, or yeah. Maybe president. You know, you know, I do love to talk and discuss and negotiate, but I don't think I think I left the politics in the past and moved into something. In the different. past, so it was even in your past at twenty two. No, okay. I didn't. Yeah, because my dad was into politics. Everything. Oh, I see about what you mean with the side. previous generation. Yeah, okay. it was all politics, all MPPs, and you know, I just, I just said no. Nah, it's just not for me. I don't think politics is for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. It might change, but for now you're just the worshiper, the recording artist. Yeah, just the worshiper, the preacher, the man, everything. Just yeah. yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Maybe I can have you on another day. We talk about Christians and politics because now you've opened up a whole can Ooh. of worms. But we'll leave that. No, for that, that will, we'll be there. We'll be we'll be there for for days. I for can days. imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. There'll be so yeah, much to say. Days. So much to say, yeah. but I mean, for me, I discovered you on Instagram, which is where most people get discovered these days. And it was yeah. your song, Father's Place, that actually popped up on my feed. And also yeah. you do quite a few, you know, worship bits here and there. And I just love your heart for worship. That's kind of what drew me to you. And it would be interesting to know from you bits around, you know, how you started leading worship, playing the guitar, writing, yeah. recording, and how you found the process in general. You know, that kind um, of I know it's really you know, not a long journey so far, but it'd be interesting to know how you found yeah. the journey so far. It is. It's only been because I started doing, uh, um, I'll say I've been doing worship from 14, but in terms of just going out and ministering, it started in 17 when I lost my brother and decided to oh dear. take the call different because I could have gone to the route of playing football, but um, I had a dream that, um, my football boots turned into a guitar and wow. from that moment I knew the Lord was calling me to minister more wow. and get out the songs that we would birth in the secret place of my brothers to yeah. um, the public world and um, it's only been I've been leading worship publicly from 17 to 22 so it's mm -hmm. probably pretty much been like a good five four, odd years, yeah. Yeah, five odd years, four or five odd years. Um, um, so generally what got me into it was generally just a love for God. I felt like what God would give me in my secret place, mm. I would have to now show people another side of God that they've never seen before. Mm. And that was the whole aim. So when my brother died, um, you know, starting a ministry called Worship for Heart Ministry. It was like, okay, God, where do we go Did from here? The Worship as Hearts Ministry. The Worship at Heart Ministry. That's worship the name at of Heart. Heart. Right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's the name of the ministry that the Lord helped me start. Um, then now it's been in Northampton and being led by one of the 
one of the great guys called Glenn and some other people as well and Duncan and so many other people within the ministry that's now been gone. We started that in uni and you know, even before uni at home, the Lord began to take me through a process of pruning and just got showed me the depths of the importance of why it is for a young person to worship God. Absolutely, yeah. And um, through that journey, that's how my music kind of came alive and came through. Because it was never, it was, it, I didn't want it just to give a song or I didn't want it just to give a sound. Mm. I wanted to give a platform for people to come and commune with God again. Hence mm-hmm. why Father's Place is all about, it's generally a testimony. It's, it's an EP of a testimony of what I've been through. Mm. So of how I've been through some troubles and some pains, but it's his place that I feel one. That's it's his place that I feel dwell. That's why Psalm 91 is there, because mm-hmm. he dwells in the secret is shall abide under the shadow of the almighty mm. you can only abide in a specific place or area mm. so it's like i would want to abide in my father's house mm. where it's just me and him because where that i'm in my across. father's house yeah yeah yeah, yeah that yeah. comes across because so, when i listen to the ep i could just feel the heart it's not yeah. not to say there's anything wrong with full band and lots of sounds but it's very yeah. stripped back you can literally just very raw you know, yeah you can just very press raw. in and take the lyrics, take the spirit, take the heart of the song as is. You know, sometimes, especially being a a songwriter and a very critical, you know, person, when I listen to music, sometimes, not all the time, I'm hearing things and I'm like, ooh, this is nice, that is good. But it's like, it's really, it's so sweet and so clean and so simple and so kind of stripped back that you just soak the worship, you soak in the worship in that, you know, that EP. That's what I love about it, it's so, so simple you know yeah. back simple and unhurried so you can actually mm-hmm. slow you can slow down your pace and listen to yeah, the songs yeah. and just press into god's god's presence so that really came across so i can now begin to connect the dots all the things that you're saying now it all begins yeah, to make yeah, sense yeah. it does make exactly. sense and how did you feel when when um you got the call that i wanted to have you on the project i don't know if you'd known much about me at the time so I would, i'd be no. quite pleased to see what your thoughts yeah. are you know what's so funny? And I was just about to come into that. Because, so the guy that helped produce my song is um, Jude Amponsa. Uh, he, he's an amazing guy. And he messaged me. And I said, yo, because I haven't spoken to him for a while because he's been busy and I've been busy uh, with uni and he's been busy. He's one of the, like, one of the more. Uh, for me, I'll say he's one of the greatest producers in the UK scene right now. Um he called man and he, and he said, hey, Najee, there's someone I would like to work with you. And I was like, oh, cool. I don't, I, when it comes to these things, I'm not used to, because I just normally see myself and people always get onto me about this, but I just see myself as a young boy living in East London, living a regular life. That's Jenny, well, just really. The, yeah, you really, <laughs> really, really just strumming the guitar. So I don't know how to handle certain things in a business term. If yeah, we yeah, be... Yeah. If we push back the spiritual, actually be real reality, like this is this is coming into a form of a business. Absolutely. So I was just like, okay, like, I don't know what what I do. Do I call back? Do I say it? But I was like, you know what? No, let me actually search. So I searched the name up and then I saw these songs. I saw these worship. I saw these awards. And I was just like, whoa, this is the real deal. What's going on here? <laughs> then I got excited. And then I'm... Um, I think I heard a majority of your songs, but there was one specific song that stood out to me. I think you'd done it with um, Fred. Um, I, I, forgot, Fred I, I don't want to pronounce it. Yeah, and that one really touched me because I was just like, no, like, I've been, I grew up listening to some of his songs and I was just like, she has the, like, the song that you guys, it was just like, no way. So I was just like, yeah, I can't ready for the call. So when you called me, I was already excited because... I already knew a lot about you. So I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go. Um, and then generally when you sent me the song and then, yeah, from that moment, I done my research, I done everything. And I was just like, yeah, generally, all I had was just, yeah, she's the real deal. That's, oh, that's all I, the real deal. Like this is the modern day worshiper. That God is just using, and I was just oh, like, praise God, yeah. praise God. Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, it's my absolute honor 
to have you on the project because um, a lot of people tend to ask me, you know, even on my previous albums, even with the Fred Hammond scenario, like mm -hmm. how do you get features? How do you get collaborations? What makes you work with people on projects? Nine mm -hmm. times out of 10, it's about the heart. It's about when I write a song, like for example, Secure, when I was writing Secure, which features mm. Bonnie Morgan, I kind of heard him doing a declaration as I was writing the song and I was praying, God, please let him say yes. So sometimes when I write a song, I can literally see the kind of voice and the kind of person and the kind of heart that needs to be on the song. So mm. I um, immediately knew that, okay, when I was thinking of who to feature, because I knew it was going to be a song that I, you know, I collaborate with a few people on because it's such a powerful, you know, anthem if you like you know mm, god alone yeah. literally a chant a declaration that there is no other god in all the earth in all of yeah. heaven and beneath the earth only jehovah only el shaddai only elohim he alone is god so it's something that we need to keep reiterating and reminding ourselves because we live in an age oh, yeah. with so many distractions so it's not like overly full of different lyrics and and, and, and rhyme and rhythm it's literally that declaration so it was something mm. that i knew needed to be reinforced with having a number of people and more than anything else, the right kind of heart to communicate mm. the message. So when I kind of saw you, I'm like, oh, this guy was so good on God alone. <laughs> it was like, he was so good on God alone. And I'm really glad you said yes. Speaking of God alone, what was your experience like in studio? I mean, when you heard the song, working with Victoria, with Gozzi, you know, all of that fun stuff. Uh, you know, like I said to you, um, true story, right? So. I get there and I was lost for at least like five <laughs> minutes, five to yeah, ten. No, minutes. it's not easy to I find this video. Sarah like Sarah. I don't know where I am. Um, I'm so far away from home because <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to like I'm so used to East London. Like I, I know my way around. So even if I ever get lost in East London, I know how to get home. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. But. When I was in the, the other border, I, I like to call the other border. And guys, if you're watching, sorry to interrupt you, Naji, if you're watching, he makes it sound like I made him come to Manchester. No, it was just South East London. So he traveled from East London to South East London. Regardless, <laughs> it, it, felt, it felt like Manchester. Because I said, you know what? If, if, if my phone dies and I'm just, I'm generally just going to stand here and look like somebody that just came fresh out of Ghana, asking everybody, sorry, where is the bus? Do you know where the bus is? Because it was like, whoa, I'm lost. And then I called her and I knocked on someone's door, actually. But I realized this ain't the door. Then I saw her on the other side and I was like, oh, that's just, wow. So when we got to the studio after 10, 15 minutes of me just strolling around, I walked in and I was just like, wow, like, like Bam Bam Studios, like, this is, this is serious. Like, because I've I've seen the studio before through Emmanuel Smith, um, we find this and so many other people in the gospel, um, UK gospel scene. And I was just like, whoa, like, this is this is serious. And then when I first saw Sarah for the first time and I saw Gaz and I saw Jonathan and all everything, I was just like, wow like i just felt this sense of hum humbleness like like these are some amazing guys and the and the way they're working you can just see the passion within all of you guys within music and it was just like wow i felt like i didn't deserve to be here because it was just like uh, I, I came here just like a tourist just taking pictures like this is so good and um i felt like when you first gave me the opportunity to hear the song i automatically fell in love with the song because it was just such a song that declares God. And I'm always a person that I love it when God is glorified. I, I really, really, really adore it when God, because it's one of the closest things that gets you to feel how heaven will be like. Absolutely. Generally, do you know, like the, the Bible says in Revelations too, how the cherubims and the seraphims and the saints in heaven gather around us all singing, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. You begin to see in that, that sentence that they're declaring more than just stating what he's done. They're declaring mm -hmm. who he is. And mm -hmm. it's amazing that we call this song God alone because even before everything, he is God all by himself. Absolutely. He, 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 he doesn't need, he, he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily need us, but he wants us because that's his desire. Oh, I you love understand? that. I and love that. Say that again. When, he doesn't need us, but he wants us. Oh my God. That's a rev right there. It, it, it's, it's just, 
He doesn't necessarily need us, but he mm-hmm. wants us. There's a difference between need and want, meaning yeah. it's a will. He willingly, he willingly chose us. Ah, he willingly <laughs> says, with, with my status, I still choose you. Yes, the guy I made from dirt and I, I blew my I, I breathed my breath into. Yes, you. I've chosen you. And I think that's what got to me to the song. It was just like, well, reverencing. And honoring that no matter how successful we go in life, he will always be God. Mm. And um, that's what drew me so close. It was just a decoration to God and singing it for the first time. You know, I was very nervous. Oh, my God. I was. I was. Yes. I was like, I'm singing in front of Sarah. I mean, it's like, girls, I'm singing. I'm just singing. Oh, God. God, don't let my voice crack, please. And um, I was trying to figure out how I'm going to get into the song. But the Lord really just led, and it was just oh, an amazing time in the studio. And I met your children; your children were amazing. Uh, yeah, it was just amazing. It was just yeah, amazing time. Definitely, yeah. I think for me as well, this song is one song that has lashed me. Even though I wrote it, Spirit mm. Come did that when I, you know, when I listened to Spirit Come in August of last year, I had a similar yeah. experience. After I'm like, you know, it's it's one thing to write a song and bless and assume that you're blessing the world with it it's another thing to be blessed by the song yourself mm-hmm. and spirit come did it to a level but god alone does it to a completely different level like it's not even my song i kind of like mm-hmm. being ministered to by other people's music and i feel like my music shouldn't do that to me but this song when i was in studio doing my bits after you and victoria and everyone had done their stuff and left i then had to do my vocals after singing that song, and anyone who's watching, if you have already got God Alone, you would probably notice that right at the end, there's some tongues for like maybe two, five seconds. But on the yeah. day, after singing my, I literally did two takes. And the first take, I went into tongues for a good five odd minutes and they actually recorded that. <laughs> but I didn't wow. even realize it was still recording because I was gone. I could not stop the worship in tongues. You would yeah. get that at the very end if you have, if you're not if you've not got the song, go get it. It's everywhere on the album restored. You can get it on all digital music platforms and listen to the end. You'll probably catch a little of tongues. That wasn't acting. That was literally the beginning of an entire different experience, which we could not share with the world, obviously, because you have to keep the song to six minutes. I think it was already yeah. six minutes at that point. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be really weird yeah. if you then have tongues going on for another three. I'm like, okay, what's happening here? But honestly, that has never happened to me in the booth it has never happened to me in studio because I'm the kind of person when I'm thinking about recording I'm thinking yeah let's get the best take let's do this let's do that but that song mm. took me to church took me to to you know it took me to a different realm it took me to, Barbara's place. My it God. Took me to a different realm and I'm just praying everyone who listens has a similar experience because yeah. it's so humbling for me very humbling to write yeah. a song and to have it do that to me I, I just know it's not mine when that happens, yeah, I mean, it, all my songs right. are not mine anyway because they're from God, but this right. one does it in a so in such a different, you know, right. way. Um, and I think it's because of, as you say, the truth of those words. Because the more you and it's it's a song that you say you sing over and over. It's just like Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega, and le- literally, it's those words you sing a number of times. That's probably why mm-hmm. it's such it's got such gravity. Is because the more you say, it, the more you declare it, the more your spirit keys in to the revelation mm-hmm. of that truth. And the That's deeper great. you go into, you know, the worship with God, I, I'm guessing, I don't want to overanalyze it, but I'm guessing that's probably why. You can't explain these things, you know, you just can't. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just, right. things, <laughs> just there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, that 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 was that was an experience and a half. So um, before we kind of wrap things up, should people get the album restored? I know I've kind of hinted it, but it'll be interesting to know what you think. Should people get restored? <laughs> I, I got to come close for this one. You got to get it. You got to you got to buy it. You got to play it. You got to stream it. You got to you got to do what you got to do with it. If you want to experience the move of God, if you want to feel that presence where everyone says, you know, I feel that. But you genuinely want to feel the presence for yourself. Please go and get the album because genuinely it's just spirit the spirit leading the spirit having complete control and uh, yeah i i would i would just tell you like you can see my arms are forward because it's just serious i'm just so serious you genuinely need to go get that album 
Get the album, get restored, get restored. And one question I forgot to ask you, I know we're going into the spirit now, but let's kind of bring it back in. What does restored mean to you? I asked everyone who's featured on the project what restored means to them. Without preaching a storm, which I kind of suspect is coming, what does restored mean to you? (laughs) I'm not going to preach a storm. I'm going to end it here. Um, For me, restored is reconciliation to the Father. Mm, Reconciliation to the Father. It's, yeah just becoming one so it's like emerging you you know you becoming a part of the trinity and becoming one with it um yeah it's just reconciliation to the father i i, I could go on but i don't want to kids in you mm-hmm. i'm just gonna just cover back to him yeah literally Re- restoration one. is coming back to him and that's the ministry that god has given us a ministry of reconciliation and restoration yeah. seeking yeah and finding the lost and bringing them back to him. And I'm trusting God that everyone who, you know, listens, if you're watching now and you're maybe even listening simultaneously, you're already going onto Apple and, 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 and asking Alexa and, you know, checking on Spotify and YouTube, you might be doing that already and maybe not, but I'm trusting God that whatever it is that you're, you know, looking up to him for in terms of restoration, whether it's your soul, in your body, in your finances, in your, in your pocket, in your family, in your yeah. job, my prayer is that he would restore all the years that you've lost. He would bring joy where there's been tears. He'll bring healing where there's been pain. And he'll um, restore to him where you felt lost, where you felt confused. He will give you clarity. He will give you peace of mind in him, in Jesus' name. I thought I'll just say that prayer for anyone watching. So guys, if this this video has been a blessing to you, after watching it, feel free to share because there might be a nugget or two. There's a few things that have been said on here that feel like sermons in themselves. And I feel like you guys need to share this video with other people so they can watch. Get the album Restored by Sarah Tabo, featuring some great people like Najee, Victoria Tunde, Evoni Morgan, Tab Worship, um, Tom, Endersby, Zion, it is going mm. to bless your socks off, if I do say so myself. So final yeah. word from Najee, where can people connect with you on social media? Yeah, so every platform there is, just type in Najee Buzia and I shall be there. And that's B-U-S-A-S-I-A, right? Yeah, B-U-S-I-A, then my that's first it. name, N-A-J-E, simple, Perfect. and Instagram okay. and everything, you should see me. Excellent. Great, great, brilliant. Thank you so much for hanging with me, Naji. And thanks everyone for joining us on this episode of Restored BTS. Don't forget to nab the album. God bless you. Keep safe and stay blessed. Go get it. Go get it. (laughs) Bye, everyone. There is no other who compares You are God by yourself For great I am, you're God alone